I think Kanban is hugely popular in all industries, not just creative industries, because it does model the behavior of the existing system, right? It doesn't require you to change uh, uh, how you're currently doing things. So effectively, when you're implementing a Kanban approach, you, you start from where you are, you model your existing system, right? And in modeling your existing system, you actually iron out some variability. Because if you've got 10 people in your organization that are, let's say, uh, let's say our output is marketing videos, right? Uh, uh, marketing content for, uh, uh, for businesses that we're working with. Then, and we've got 10 people working on that marketing content. How does each person choose what the next thing it is they go work on? If every person picks differently, right, makes choices differently, then we've got a high degree of variability in our system that we can iron out, right? If if all of these 10 people just got together and agreed, whatever thing is in, in our list of things to do that's been sitting there the longest, let's do that, right? That, that way, the oldest thing is the quickest thing uh, uh, to, to get through the system because you're trying to reduce your overall cycle time, right, for your customers. Then you can use Kanban to model your system, right? You have that conversation. What is our working agreement? What is our definition of workflow for our system? You model it, decide when it starts and when it finishes, and then you've got the data to figure out when we make changes, is it improving the system or is it not improving the system? Actually, I, I had this conversation uh, a couple of months ago uh, with my dentist, right? So totally nothing to do with software nothing to do with it nothing to do with any of those industries if you're if you're a dentist right you have to book people in for appointments how quickly can you book people in for appointments so if i say to my dentist i need an appointment and it's 3 months out right uh, that's 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 a very long time right so their their cycle time, their ability to get that something into the system, I've asked for an appointment and be able to actually deliver it is really, really long, really long. What could they do to shorten that cycle time? Well, perhaps they need little gaps in their sis in their in their in their calendar to be able to have things that pop in. Perhaps they need to deal with cancellations better. Perhaps they can chase people to say, do you still need this appointment? All those kind of things, right? But how do they know? That that's effective. How do they know that it's valuable and it's changing uh, the way they do business, right? Because wouldn't it be great if you went to the dentist and said, "I need an appointment," and they said, "Yeah, we've got one next Thursday for you," right? That would be great. Um, so having a model for your system, so that you can monitor the flow of work through your system and look at your cycle times, look at your throughput, look at how long things are taking, because the shorter uh, uh, the throughput quite often shorter the cycle time, right? People getting into the system and getting through it quicker. And I'll tell you something, people are happier customers if they get their stuff faster. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at that continuous flow, continuous delivery of stuff, whatever stuff's in your system. We want to deliver it as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, follow and subscribe. I always reply to comments and if you want to have a chat about this or anything else, Agile, Scrum or DevOps, then please book a coffee with me through Naked Agility.